Well, we're continuing to talk about pieces of the liturgy so that we can, in understanding what that piece of the liturgy is doing, we're hoping that we can enter more deeply into uh, our worship. So after the piece, we have what is called the offertory, uh, is when offerings are brought forward to the altar. And sometimes that means that we will have uh, the offering plate brought forward, and it usually has uh, gifts of, of money. We will have uh, bread in a ciborium brought forward, and then we will also have uh, a container of wine. Um, we haven't, during COVID, we've had less hands touching the elements, and so that always hasn't, that hasn't always been done during COVID. But the idea of the offering is not just money, um, it is also the bread and the wine that the community is offering forward. And it is also, uh, sometimes in uh, churches would bring forward offerings for the poor. So they might be offerings for the food bank, or we have the sharing shelves, and so we could bring forward some of the offerings that are brought there as well as a uh, recognition of these. These are things that we are offering to God. This is a, an ancient practice. So uh, Justin Martyr, um, I'm just going to get his dates here. So Justin Martyr in 155 AD and Hippolytus in 225 AD both mentioned that there was an offering to, as a part of the worship service. This is an ancient part of the service. And um, so what, why do we do this? We do this to offer of our lives to support the work of the church. We offer bread, we offer wine, we offer money that is, uh, represents hours of our lives. It represents what we spend our time doing in our day-to-day -day life. We offer that to God, almost as a symbol of offering ourselves to God. And this is a funny kind of offering, right? Because we're giving to God what God has given to us. It's a little bit like children for Mother's Day or Father's Day, the mother or father might give them some money to get them a gift. And it's a, it's a silly thing to think that the child went out and got a job and uh, bought this, or that the father or the mother is better on the transaction. But it, we are, so it's a kind of a similar kind of thing, like a dad giving their child some money to go get him a Father's Day gift. We give to God what God has already given us. And so it is this kind of beautiful back and forth. But we can't sort of pretend that this is something that um, we own <laughs> on our, apart from God giving it to us. Uh, you know, even if we imagine our own work, give it our own brain power producing this money, our own muscles producing this, this money, uh, really it's God who's given us the brain power and God who's given us the energy and life so that we can earn this. So uh, in the Book of Common Prayer, we say, uh, we re reference 1 Chronicles 29, and there we read, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Everything in heaven and earth is yours. Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. So everything we have ultimately is God's. But this is something that we are called to as human beings. Alexander Schmemann, who's a, a theologian, he says that it, without the fall, the place of the human being would ultimately be to offer things back to God in, in gratitude. And we, we offer these things to God out of gratitude for what God has done for us. We don't give because God needs it as much. It's actually we who need to do the giving. It is good for our souls to give back to God. And that's primarily why we do this. We do this also in recognition of what Christ sacrificed for us. And so we are to be people who are of sacrificial love. And so we learn to give in a sacrificial way for the benefit of building up the church and also for the benefit of the poor and the ministries of the church. We want to be people who love sacrificially and that requires us practicing sacrifice 
practicing giving things, um, giving of ourselves, our time, talent, and treasure. Alexander Schmemann has said this, the first, the basic definition of man is that he is the priest. He stands in the center of the world and unifies it in his act of blessing God, of both receiving the world from God and offering it to God. And by filling the world with this Eucharist, meaning thanksgiving, he transforms his life, the one that he receives from the world into the life in God, into communion with him. I know it's a complicated thought, but it's this idea of this mutual giving back and forth, back and forth. So he also says this, uh, we offer to God the totality of our lives, of ourselves, of the world in which we live. This is the first meaning of our bringing to the altar the elements of our food. So as I said before, what we are doing when we are giving the offering is that we are giving ourselves to God, symbolically giving ourselves to God. These elements, this money, the bread, the wine, anything else that is brought forward during the offering, they're symbols of our own life being offered to God. Shemaman says, this offering is a sacrifice, but sacrifice is the most natural act of man, the very essence of his life. Man is a sacrificial being because he finds life in love, and love is sacrificial. So God does not ultimately need our offering, but we are in need of growing in sacrificial love. We are in need of learning to be people who are giving. Um, and so our offering is a way of joining God in that sacrificial love, learning sacrificial love. And this, we follow the offering. So once everything is brought forward to the altar, then we have an offering, offertory prayer. And that prayer over the offering is actually has its roots in the Jewish tradition. It's modeled after the blessing over bread and wine that was used at the time of Jesus. And so the offering is something, I know one preacher, he, he loved the offering. And when he would put his, his envelope there, it was also a reminder to him that this money did not control him. He was not a slave to this money. And he spoke to it as if it was an idol. And he would put it in the offering plate as it went by, and he would say, you are not my God. And he would put it there in the plate, knowing that this plate was then going to go to the altar, offer, it be offered to God this, um, this thing that controls so many people's lives, uh, this money. And he offered it to God, saying that this is not going to control him. He is not going to allow his desire and passion for wealth to control his life. He's going to offer it to God. He's going to sacrifice it to God, knowing that God will do good with it and knowing that it is not something that needs to, to his life needs to center on it. It is a tool to be used. And so I, whenever I think of the offering, I always think of that preacher and I think that it's a beautiful thing to, to, uh, to do. And so when we give our offering, we, we need, should be thinking about this as being a piece of our life, actually a representative of our whole life that we are offering to God. We want to think of it as something we are giving to support the work of God's church so that it can reach out to people, it can support and strengthen what is the ministries that are going on in the church. And we also want to remember that we are not controlled by the things we own. And so when we give that offering, we are also, it's an act, a subversive act in our culture to say that my money does not control me. So we can give that, that potential idol to God to be used for good. So that is the offering. And the offering stands between, it's the beginning of the Eucharist part of the service. So the, the service is often broken into word and sacrament. And the, the word portion we deal with preparing to hear scripture, we hear scripture, we reflect on scripture in the, in the sermon, 
and then uh, we, we respond to scripture through the prayers of the people, and then we have the offering, which is the beginning of the, the sacrament, the Holy Eucharist part of the service. I hope that's helpful. God bless you.